Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike at Trade RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your purchase of your 2020 Jayco 284 BHS J Flight. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, leave plenty of room for that big awning to come out. On your off campsite, beside your slide, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Leave room for that slide and then park so that you can reach your city water connect here. And then your power actually comes out of the rear here. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive and unhook our hitch, first thing we're going to do is level our unit. Now the unit does come with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply raise or lower the unit until you're level. If for some reason you lose power underneath this rubber stopper right here, this little hand crank will get in there and get this up and down should you not have power. Speed of power, check your battery post now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. Once you got our unit level, next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. All four corners of the unit have these scissor stabilizer jacks. Three quarter inch socket here. You can use an impact driver or a drill gun. I just recommend if you do, slow down when you get to the bottom. I'm also going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot blacktop in the summer. It's going to better distribute the weight. You're going to go ahead and run these down just until they're taut. Once you have any type of resistance on your hand crank, go ahead and stop. Because remember, all we're trying to do is stabilize it. We don't want to change the levelness of it. Go around your unit, get all four of these down. Once you got your unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Again, your power cord store is actually in the rear of your unit. Big 30 amp cord store inside there. At the end of that 30 amp, should you need to plug into a 110 in your convenience pack, will be a 30 to 15 amp reducer, so you can plug into some 110. Get your power hooked up, let's hook up our water. At campsites, we're gonna hook up to city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid into your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up, hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. Here's on the rear of the unit. And all we're gonna do at this point, folks, is make sure our drain plug's back in. You may have left it out last time you were camping, draining your hot water heater. Get that in there nice and snug, then you can go ahead and turn that hose on. After that hose been out for a few minutes, Go inside, open up your slides, and deploy, uh, deploy all your slides, and open up all of your water taps. Get all your water taps opened up, get a nice steady flow of water going through them, and then shut them off. Then you'll know that your hot water heater is full and you can turn that on from indoors. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go boondocking or dry camping. In that case, we're going to fill up our potable water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. 
One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the insides where you check the level of your black and gray tanks. You can also get the level for your fresh water. Once that fresh water tank is full, remove the hose, put your cap back on, and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up to camp with power and water. Let me walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit. Continuing here on our camping side. Left of our doorway will be a 110 and cable and a mounting bracket for a TV. Down below here is our low point drain. Right there. That'll be for your fresh water. The vent for your microwave. Access panel to the back of your fridge. And a flue for your furnace. Two things on that. Make sure it's never blocked. And two if you are running it. Steer clear of it. It does get hot. Coming to the back of your unit here. The outdoor kitchen area. You pull this out. Take your quick connect LP. Connect there to your griddle. And right there is your quick connect. Electric your fridge out here. On your awning, you have a pitch adjust. It's raining, you want to run the rainwater this way. Pull down on that, and that'll tilt your awning away. Get a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. You prep for a backup camera. Again, your power and your hot water heater. Spare tire with a cover. Important, it keeps it from dry rotting. That's where you plug in your cable at the campsite. That's where we dump our black and gray tanks. The other low point drains. City water connection and an outdoor shower. Coming around to the front of your unit, the other side of your pass through storage. Your propane does come with a regulator. Lefty Lucy to turn them on. Again, your battery. And that about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. Coming up in your unit, first thing I like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camp with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. Just to the right of that in our kitchen area is our 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mention this 12 volt is always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking somewhere, and you're going to be gone for the entire day, use your battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down. To my left as I come in, control panel for checking the levels of your brand new battery, fresh. That's a button to hold down when filling your potable water. Black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump. Here's where you turn on your water heater hooked to gas and your water heater hooked to electric. It does make a difference. Choose correctly. Exterior awning light and interior lights. Awning and slide control on your awning. Again, you only want to run that out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees. If you hold that button down, that will continue to run itself out and start running itself up backwards. So just keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. As I run that in, shut off our awning light. And once that's in the rest way, we'll go ahead and continue our tour. These are called slam locks because they work best when gently slammed. All right, coming into our kitchen, we've got a self-explanatory microwave, light and fan above your cooktop. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light, turn this to light, hit your spark, show you all three of them working. Same thing on the oven, turn this to light. Uh, 
hit your spark that will light your pilot and then turn it to the desired temperature down below your oven is going to be your breaker box and fuses a ton of 15s in there a 40 highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping fridge turn that baby over to auto that means you're so when you're plugged in you're running off electricity as soon as you unplug you're on gas switch over to gas if that light starts flashing your gas is low one through five five being the coldest IRV technology sound system so I pick a channel up in here kind of hard in this metal building sometimes but AM FM Bluetooth DVD CD player Okay, here's our remote. TV sound, front audio, disc, AM, FM. Dual zones, turn it indoors and outdoors. TV, crank that up. When you are at campsites, make sure that when you arrive, you go ahead and run, run a digital ch channel scan to make sure all the you pick up the local channels. And in order to do that, simply just go to your remote, hit mode. We're going to switch all the way over to channel. Get this to get over there. But once you get to channel, hit your channel scan, and that'll run you through everything. Another remote for your sound system bunk areas have their own individual lighting in your bathroom 110 with gfci reset you do have a hand crank open power exhaust vent in here thermostat crank the air up on in here Hear that cranking? That also has a quick dump. Shut that off. Now you notice your AC will shut off kind of quick. And then when I turn your heat on, you'll notice that your heat will take a few minutes before it cycles through and shuts off. Now again, as I shut that off, it's gonna take a few minutes. All right, uh, sofa here. Looks like a jackknife. Lift up on the front and that'll lay that down for you. Lift up on the front, pull it back towards you to get it back to a sofa. Dinette, remove this table. Lift it up off them bars, take the bars down. Put your dinette table on top of these lips. Put a couple flat cushions on top and you got another bed. Your smoke alarm. Back in your bedroom. Your lighting here for accent. Individual lighting here. This TV mount. Put a little TV on there. And then push back toward you with this bracket and lift this up. This same mount is outside, so you can take that same TV, snap it on outdoors other accent lighting and storage under your bed which is accessible from outdoors one more thing to mention in your bedroom your door bedroom door you want to make sure this is snapped open for travel and that about covers everything on the inside it's like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up I like to start I go into my control panel and shut off my interior lights. That way, any lights that are on, I see our individual accent lights that I can just walk through and shut off by hand. Put the cooktop back down. Now once our accents are off, I can turn on my main light and say doors are drawers. 
Go through your unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Make sure nothing's going to impede your slides from coming in. Turn to my control panel and hit slide in. Why did you hear that noise? That's just the slide mechanism saying I'm in all the way. Don't need to bring me in any further. All right, exiting the unit. I hard to see in the dark here. Uh, make sure that you can leave this door all the way open. Otherwise, this can catch on it when you bring this up. Your feet are also adjustable by removing this cotter pin. Before you leave the dump station, and I say that in case you want to go inside and watch the levels of your tanks as you're dumping, make sure you lock and deadbolt this door. All right, at this point, if we are out boondocking, get up underneath there, dump our low point drain for our fresh water, bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on home. If we are out camping at a campsite, we're gonna unhook our water, our power, our cable, Hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. And at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be all the way at the rear of the unit, just behind your rear tires and your off campsite. Got a 10 foot hose. Hook that hose up and pull our black handle. Now, this can be all sewer water. When that black handle is no longer draining, Close that up and pull your gray handle. The gray handle is going to be cleaner while your sinks and showers. While that's draining, go ahead and pull your low point drains. If you're done camping for the season when them low point drains are done, come back here to your hot water heater. Lift up on this pressure release valve. Get all that water out of there. Be careful, it's going to be hot. When that's done, push that back down. And then you can pull your drain plug. Come back around here, close your low point drains, close your gray, take your sewage, or take your uh, sewage hose, and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper, and head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this J-Flight for many years to come. Happy camping.